Hello and welcome to another fun-filled edition of Adam's Music Box. Now, there's not much that can be said about Aretha Franklin that hasn't already been said. So I want to begin this tribute to the First Lady of Soul by pointing you in the direction of a video from what looks like a local or regional television show from 1994, where Aretha is talking about the great Curtis Mayfield. And it was in the 90s that Curtis suffered... <laughs> from a tragic accident where his body was crushed by a stage light that fell on his spine, which uh, rendered him completely paralyzed for the final decade of his life. One of the worst incidents in music history. And in this tribute that she was paying to him, she was sat at the piano and just spontaneously broke into pitch perfect song, singing The Makings of You, one of the best love songs ever written and written, of course, by Curtis Mayfield. And it's those little glimpses like that, which I think underscore the fact that the virtuosity that one saw on the lighted stage that one saw on her many, many albums and singles it was not only the real deal, but it came from the perspective of knowing music inside and out. And what's more is that while gospel music has had a huge influence, a disproportionately large influence on Western and particularly North American pop music, it was nevertheless I think the first time that the majority of sort of mainstream audiences in America and elsewhere heard gospel when they first heard Aretha Franklin, because her technique, her great dynamic range, her control, her sense of pitch, all of this was learned in the church, not the conservatoire or anything like that, not in music lessons, but in the lessons she got singing in the gospel choir. And by transferring those skills to the pop world, as many in that era and since have done, people got to hear a superstar who was taking the music from her church and putting it to the top of the pop charts. And in that sense, I think she helped spread awareness of just how musically interesting and sophisticated and virtuosic gospel music is. And when you look at the, the commodification of music, and not just the record industry, but the commodification of music education, and the fact that so many people find find it intimidating to learn to sing or how to play an instrument, that all of these trends that were all about intimidating, keeping people away from music, that didn't exist in the gospel choirs. Uh, in fact, the opposite was true. It was all about recruiting people, bringing them into the choir, saying, why are you in the pews? You should be up here because a lot of people in the pews in, in Baptist and in Southern Baptist churches are singing anyway. And so I think that that is very important to realize that in terms of how the stratified nature of music education goes, one of the places that was the most open, the most charitable, the most giving, and the most musically successful as a result were the gospel churches that gave people like Aretha Franklin a chance to become the superstar that they deserve to be. If, if that if that background didn't exist, if her parents weren't taking her to church every Sunday, would the world know Aretha Franklin? Would she have been able to develop her talent? It's impossible to say, but we, we can guess the odds. And to show just how rich that musical training was and how naturally gifted her voice was, we saw those two things collide uh, in 1998 at the Grammy Awards because at that show, Pavarotti was ill, he couldn't perform, and so they needed someone to sing his signature aria, Nessun Dorma. And they call on Aretha Franklin, not an opera singer, a gospel singer who recorded soul and pop music. And she absolutely blew the house down. That the, the word virality wasn't associated with performances in the 90s, but that's what it was. And in the decades since, it has gone viral on YouTube and elsewhere on social media. Now, that shows, again, 
pure talent, but a talent that was harnessed in the right ways by the training she got in the gospel church. So while she's the first lady of soul to many, I would consider her the first lady of gospel as well. And it's and it's not at all coincidental that, in fact, uh, opera, secular opera, the singing techniques learned there derive from the church music of Europe, of Western European Catholicism and Protestantism. Uh, that's where that style of singing derives. And of course, it evolves over the years. Certain techniques are used in secular and commercial opera music that are not used in sacred liturgical music. But nevertheless, there is that connection. Just as in modern American pop music, there's an undeniable connection between the gospel singing of great like Aretha Franklin and the pop music that conquered the world. So, Here's to Aretha Franklin, one of the very, very best to ever do it. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Take care.